In today's video, we'll be looking at uh, the carbon cycle, but before I start that, I need to introduce to you one of the key players in the carbon cycle, which are the decomposers. And I'll also talk about the tritophores, which are related to that. Now, decomposers are organisms that feed on dead organic matters and turn them into inorganic stuff. Uh, for example, bacteria, a lot of the times they are decomposers. We say that they are saprophytic, or they're saprotrophs, uh, meaning they actually feed on dead organic matter. The way they do it is that they secrete enzymes out of their body to digest the food. So actually, they do what we call external digestion. So rather than eating the food itself and then digesting it inside, like a digestive system, they secrete enzymes out of their body uh, to their surroundings, digest them, and then they absorb the things back into their body by fusion. The tritophores, on the other hand, uh, they still feed on dead organic matter, so they work in the same way. However, they do internal digestion. So what that means is they actually eat the food into their body and by doing so, they increase the surface area of the food that they're actually eating or the, the, the material that they're digesting. So uh, examples would include um, maggots or wood lice. So what they do is they first munch on the food, you know, a dead chicken, and then after they've munched on it, uh, the surface of a chicken becomes rough and that increases the surface area and therefore there's more surface area of the chicken for the bacteria the decomposers to actually work on. So what they do is they increase the surface area to speed up the process of decomposition. And this is the difference between the two and be aware that decomposers do external digestion, the tritophores do internal digestion. And here we have a look at the actual carbon cycle. So as you can see here, um, I've sort of drawn a mini version of the world. We've got some producers, the trees, and we've got uh, consumers that actually eat the producers. Uh, we've got a dead consumer here, and we've got fossil fuels on the very bottom when uh, decay can't completely happen, and we've got the power plants here. The reason why we think about the carbon cycle is because think about the fact that all organic matter is made up of carbon. So all the carbohydrates in our body, lipids and proteins, nucleotides, DNA, all of those things contain lots and lots of carbon in it. They are basically hydrocarbon. So it's important to think about how we transfer it from one place to another. And you can see how all of the carbon in the world is actually recycled in some sense. So let's say in the beginning, uh, we've got a set amount of carbon dioxide that exists within the atmosphere. Obviously, there will be other things like carbon monoxide. However, we'll focus on the carbon dioxide, which is the key uh, molecule that contains carbon. First of all, we can think about the producers as the first level. Producers will take in carbon dioxide uh, in the process of photosynthesis because that's one of the materials needed for photosynthesis to actually happen. But they also release carbon dioxide and so the consumers uh, because they do respiration and obviously taking in oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide in the process. That's how we can say they fluctuate between the producers and consumers and the atmosphere. And of course, because the consumers actually eat part of the producers, so we say feeding is one of the processes in which carbon can be transmitted as well. Now we've got death after they died. I mean, the carbon is still in the system, so it's still there. There's something else that we need to consider is when the organisms die, uh, they would have decomposers, as we mentioned earlier, uh, around them. So imagine they are covered with the decomposers, and what the decomposers do is when they are digesting or decaying the organic matter, they actually release carbon dioxide as well. So that's another contribution to the atmospheric carbon dioxide level. As they are digesting the organic stuff, some of the remaining ones that cannot be digested can become fossils as well, and they stay in there. Uh, some of them will become fossil fuels as well. And the fossil fuels get skin up by humans to do combustion for energy and electricity that we use every day. And through the burning, or shall we say the combustion, fossil fuels, we release carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and any other unburnt carbon into the atmosphere again. And once more, they go back into the producers, consumers, and the whole cycle is completed. There you have it. This is the carbon cycle.